July 17, 2018. Visitors are invited to join uh, board members in rising to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Here. Councilwoman Romeo. Here. Councilman Weiner. Here. Supervisor Sealy. Here. And attorney for the town. Here. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk, and uh, welcome everyone. Good evening. It's a beautiful evening outside. Uh, despite my efforts, we cannot host meetings at the town gazebo, so we will close those shades. So you're not reminded of what a lovely uh, midsummer evening we have in July in Aranaquois. A um, few uh, remarks before we get started with our general order of business. I'll note we have uh, three public hearings tonight. Um, those will start at 735 and run consecutively. We'll probably take up a little bit of our order of business before then uh, with regards to resolutions. Uh, I uh, encourage residents if they came to speak on a particular public hearing, the sign up sheet is over there. Um, you're welcome to sign up now or uh, come when we uh, come up to speak when we call the public hearing. You're certainly not precluded from addressing the board on the public hearing. Uh, if you do not sign up. Uh, we do do public input to start the meeting. If you have anything to address the board about that's not germane to those three public hearings, uh, you're invited to do so at that time. If you are here to talk about one of the three public hearings, we ask that you do wait until 735 in order to get it on the official record for the, uh, for the town. Um, a few uh, remarks before we get started. Um, our 4th of July celebration uh, has just passed. I just want to thank all the residents, guests, vendors, uh, staff, Really, any stakeholder who helped make it a really great two days at Town Hall, uh, despite some very arid weather. Um, uh, according to American Legion Post 134, who uh, are our entrepreneurs in the beverage garden, they said it was probably one of the busiest uh, July 3rds they've ever seen. And I think everything was run smoothly and everyone had a good time. No significant problems from our perspective. Um, a special treat, I'll note, this was a surprise on the 4th, was getting to meet the Wynn family from Johnston, uh, Tennessee. Uh, every year they attend uh, a different part of the country for the 4th of July. They visit a different community. And this year they decided to visit Aranaquite and said they had a terrific time. So we were honored to have them uh, celebrate Independence Day with us. Our Movies Under the Stars kicked off last week. If you missed the Polar Express, you have three more opportunities to come to Town Hall campus for some free entertainment. The movies start at dusk, 8.45ish. Uh, we invite you to bring a lawn chair. Um, there's always pre-movie entertainment uh, for an hour or two before the films. The next uh, film will be on Friday, August 10th, The Incredibles, August 31st, August 31st, Finding Dory, and Coco on September 21st. Uh, next Friday, July 27th at 6 p.m., we'll have our annual Kids <coughs> Night at McAvoy Park on Empire Boulevard. Uh, you're welcome to drop your kids off and we'll entertain them. So you have a few hours to go out to dinner, patron our restaurants, or do whatever you please. Uh, kids can enjoy dinner, snacks, as well as some time playing on the turf. Uh, children will be broken up into age-appropriate groups for the evening. The cost is $25 per child. Uh, that includes dinner, snacks, crafts, and games. There's a $5 discount for siblings. Pre-registration -pre is required. Uh, visit aroundacoitrec.com for more information. On Sunday, July 29th from at 2.30, uh, as part of our summer weekly gazebo series, uh, not only will we have the big band and swing music from Johnny Matt Band, but we'll also have a classic car cruising with all the street machines in Rochester. This event's free and open to all. You're guaranteed to have a great time. Food will be available for purchase from the Tom Walls food truck. Again, that's July 29th at 2.30. August 1st, a Wednesday marks the Ronaquai Police Department's annual National Night Out Crime Prevention Rally at Camp Eastman from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, we encourage attendees to bring a non-perishable food item or school supply in exchange for a raffle ticket, and those proceeds go to the Irondequoit Community Center. Uh, there's always a lot of great things to do, and it's a, a really the biggest, uh, by far the biggest national night out uh, put on in the area, and our police department always does a terrific job in making sure the community can uh, engage with their officers, and it's part of our overall community policing strategy, which we're very proud of. On Sunday, August 5th, We'll see a new event this year in Aranaquite with the first annual Discover Aranaquite Scavenger Hunt. All are welcome to discover the beauty and uniqueness of Aranaquite. Register outside the public library from 1 to 1.30. Participants will receive a free, free, free prize at all five locations, as well as a hot dog and soda after the hunt. 
Um, this is a new thing we're doing in partnership with some folks interested in marketing the town and all of its assets, both to residents and outside. So we encourage you to come check it out. Hopefully this will be the first year and it will grow every year uh, hereafter. Uh, on a behalf of the town uh, and as a proud 1999 alumni of Aronacoit High School, I just wanted to take a second to uh, congratulate Jeff Crane, who last week announced his pending retirement as superintendent of the West Aronacoit School District. Uh, Jeff Crane was my principal in high school, believe it or not, in the late 90s and soon after became superintendent. I love that picture that's showing on the screen because I think that was my junior year and Jeff was like 48 at that time and looked like he was 28. So yeah, Jeff ages well. But anyway, his leadership and passion have helped make West Aronacoit quite a terrific school district. Anyone who knows Jeff knows that he pours his heart and soul into the children with whom he educates. And uh, he believes that, I think he joins me in believing that education can and will be a great equalizer in our society. So congratulations, Jeff. It's with a heavy heart somewhat, but we wish you nothing but the best in the future. Uh, last week at our workshop meeting, we were uh, happy to honor uh, Tony Dambra, a junior accountant here at Town Hall with our Staff Spotlight Award, which we do monthly. Uh, Tony, um, there's, there's few invoices that I sign off on that don't first pass through Tony's desk, and uh, he uh, looks at them diligently to make sure we stay on budget. He's terrific to have around professionally, but most of all, he's a treat to uh, um, be around on a personal level. And I'll just note, uh, today uh, my uh, colleagues on the town board uh, joined me in, um, for the first time ever, uh, signing a proclamation to recognize uh, Pride Week in uh, Rochester. This is something we felt uh, important to do in support of our LGBTQ uh, plus community. Uh, we continue to support any efforts to, uh, that ensure that all citizens are treated equal under the eyes of the law. So on behalf of the town, a very happy Pride Week to all those in Rochester uh, celebrating that. <laughs> With that, I have one brief uh, proclamation and invite the town board members to join me at the podium. So this was not planned and one of my colleagues is not expecting this. Um, however, after he made a decision to no longer uh, serve in, a, I guess, an extracurricular activity on behalf of the town, I received an outpouring of uh, residents and folks asking us to uh, commemorate him and thank him for his service uh, on that uh, town-related board. So I want to invite members of our town library community to join me at the podium. Um, so for, for John, uh, John Perticone has been a uh, town council member since 2008, our deputy supervisor since 2014. Uh, for the bulk of that time, in addition to working very, very hard as a town council member and public servant, uh, he has dedicated uh, hundreds if not thousands of hours as the town's liaison uh, to the library board. Um, and in doing so, anyone who knows, it's been a dynamic time over the past decade for our town library, I'd say in a good way. Um, but John has been a steadfast advocate for the library, um, advocating as a town board member. Um, when the uh, planning process was taking place for our new consolidated library, I believe John probably went to most, if not all, meetings, which were a lot of meetings, probably in the dozens. Um, so there's, there's few people probably more responsible, and you know, all the voters are responsible for, for funding and supporting that library, but um, on an acute level, a few people more than more so than John who put so many hours of uh, blood, sweat, and tears into that library, making sure it's a great facility. Um, so he has made the decision after about a decade to no longer serve as a town board liaison, and one of, uh, one of us will replace him in that capacity. But I know he's been an asset on the, uh, the town uh, uh, library board, which for those of you who don't know is very important. It actually has a fiduciary responsibility over the library. We fund it. However, they uh, have budget oversight over that library. Um, I know the li I don't speak for the library board of trustees and, and the library family, but I, I know they view John as a town board member, but also one of them. It's right across the street, but I think John is welcome equally in both places as, as we all should be. But anyway, this is rare, but we do have a, a proclamation for a town board member. This might be a first, so I'm just gonna read a little bit of it um, and then ask uh, uh, Terry and Susan from the library to come up and say a few words. Uh, whereas it is widely held that libraries serve as one of the most important symbols of equality in any civil society as they provide the same access to all citizens of a community, regardless of any notion of privilege or economic class, and whereas the town of Aronacoit prides itself 
on its steadfast commitment to maintaining a vibrant library system and is known for its strong patronage and high utilization of the resources offered within. And whereas Deputy Supervisor John Perticone has served on the town board since 2008 and for a majority of his tenure has served as the liaison to the Aranaquit Library Board of Trustees. And whereas in 2015, after years of planning and advocacy, the town of Aranaquit opened a new state-of-the-art centralized library that has since been widely held to be one of the area's finest. And whereas the approval and construction of the new library would not have occurred had it not been for many citizens and officials committed to ensuring the people of Aranaquite and future generations have access to such a wonderful amenity. And whereas Deputy Supervisor Perticone has spent hundreds of hours collectively advocating on behalf of the Aranaquite Public Library and is one of the per people most responsible for the construction and success of the new facility. And whereas Deputy Supervisor Perticone has recently stepped down as the town board's liaison to the Library Board of Trustees, now let it be resolved that we, Supervisor David Seeley and parentheses, most of, and parentheses, the Aranaquoit Town Board, on behalf of the residents <laughs> of the town of Aranaquoit, extend our gratitude to Deputy Supervisor John Perticone for his many years of service on the Library Board of Trustees, so declared on this day, uh, the 17th, July, 2018. So thank you very much, John. <laughs> I have, here tonight joining us, we have uh, Library Director Terry Buford and also uh, Secretary of the Li Library Board of Treasurer of the Library Board of Trustees, Susan Kramarski, here to say a few words, and then I'll let John talk if he wants to. I, I did catch him off guard, though, which I'm sure he loves. Terry? Thank you. Good evening. We're here tonight to recognize John Perticone for his many years of service to the town as liaison to the Library's Board of Trustees. You may not even realize that this job exists, but the liaison is appointed to ensure good communication between the library board and the town board. John has done a superb job in this communicator role. Now, if you know John, you know he's a world-class talker. But he is also a world-class listener. But he's done even more than that. As the supervisor was saying, he has been a stalwart supporter of the library, and he played a vital role in the work that brought the new library proposal to fruition. John went above and beyond so many times, it's become routine. When he told us that he was stepping down from this position, we knew right away we would have to recognize him publicly for the awesome work that he's done. Supervisor Seeley, thanks for this opportunity. And John, on behalf of the library staff, thank you so much for your dedication and your hard work. And to those who are gonna come after him, I say you have a tough act to follow. Thank you, John. I'm representing the Board of Trustees, um, many of whom chose this week to be on vacation, but it is a real privilege for me to, to represent the Board of Trustees. Um, the history of the Arundaquoi Library, I found out, begins in 1947, and it had almost from the beginning increasing ambitions for service, collections, and buildings. John Perticone has almost been here every step of the way as a lifelong Arondequoit resident. The building across the lawn was envisioned in 1975 and it took 40 years to realize the dream. Such a dream doesn't, does not come true by wishful thinking. It takes a group with leadership, vision to create a team, collection, services, and a structure that this past year was named the Rochester Regional Library Council Library of the Year. Let's be clear, it also takes work, 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 work. And that is embodied by John Perticone. John, as we've heard, has served for 10 years as liaison from the town board to the library. And if you imagine that that means a nice title, let me clarify. Liaison means in addition to being a champion of the library, both all over town and outside of town. He was an organizer for the campaign to construct the building, and based on his significant professional experience, was instrumental in building the building. And, based on his lifelong knowledge of the community, has been an advocate for the needs of the library. It's not just a warehouse but an institution of information and a community center. And 
he has been our go-to guy in working through the inevitable challenges of a state-of-the-art construction. It is my sincere privilege uh, on behalf of the board, staff, and the community to thank John for his service uh, to our library. Thank you. Just to be clear, John is not retiring as a council member, but uh, I, you know we, we never like to pat ourselves on the back, and this might seem a little unorthodox, but I certainly felt it was an extraordinary circumstance that warranted it. So, John, if you want to say a few words, get the timer out. Thank you, and you know, I, they did catch me by, by surprise, let's face it. Uh, I, I didn't expect this, but I want to thank everyone, and especially Terry and the board. Um, the board, uh, the library is in great hands going forward. Um, I was just doing my job, and I enjoy it. I mean, my lifelong was construction, and when I was told uh, we're going to have to build a library, but we're going to have to coordinate the town board and the library board together to, to go forward with the new building. And um, I helped bridge it. I didn't do it alone. There was a lot of people involved, but I did what was part of helping bridging it, and uh, here we are with a new facility. And um, what Sue didn't know either is, um, when after the construction of that building, uh, that was one of the um, um, projects that we got number one for building, you know, uh, about four years ago, so which was good. And uh, Pete Wainer here on the town board was the architect on the job too. So it's, it's had a multitude of um, definitely recognition over there, and it took a lot of people to get it to that point. But like I said before, I, I'm, I'm very... Uh, honored by this and caught me by surprise, but we're in good hands. The library will go forward and it'll prosper all the community and everyone in the community and surrounding communities as well too. So thank you. I appreciate it. Let's get the work in. Okay, fun's over. <laughs> With that, uh, we'll move on to public input. I have um, no one signed up for general public input. Um, remind people, we do have three public hearings. If there was one matter you did want to address the board that was not germane to any of the public hearings, uh, you may do so at this time. Okay, we will move on from public input and look forward to the public hearing starting at 735. Uh, Madam Clerk, we'll now move on to the financial report. Mr. Checky. Good evening. The 2018 financial results as of June 30th. 50% of the year has elapsed and the town's total expenses of approximately $17.5 million, which equals $15.1 million in actual expenses, plus about $2.4 million in open encumbrances, are only slightly higher than the budget at 50.7%. Uh, note that the actual expenses alone equate to only 43.6% of the budget. Regarding the encumbrances, they are still typically high during this time of year as departments continue to commit to services, supplies, and commodities that will be needed for the rest of the year. The general fund expenses overall are slightly bo below budget at 49% or approximately $10.1 million. The actual expenditures are 44.2% of budget, approximately 9.2 million, and the remaining 4.7% is $984,000 of encumbrances. The total expenses of the three highway funds are approximately $3.2 million, or 57.1% of budget, obviously above the 50% of the year that has elapsed. The costs result from substantial expenses and open encumbrances for gas, fuel, 
salt, installment debt, and equipment parts as have been anticipated. <coughs> Expenditures in the library are above budget at approximately 1.3 million or 54.5% of budget. The current overrun is attributed to debt service. The annual bond anticipation note, principal and interest payments of $346,000 for the new consolidated library were made in a prior month. This unfavorable impact of debt service is expected to level off by the end of the year. The sewer fund expenses and encumbrances of approximately $2 million are at 49.8% of budget. Expenses and encumbrances in stormwater drainage are approximately 36.1% of budget, total of $284,970. For the revenue side, the general fund has received revenue of approximately $14 million through June 30th, which is 68.9% of budget. The library is at 96.1% of budget. The highway funds are at 79.9% of budget and both sewer and stormwater drainage funds are approximately at 100% of the budget. Regarding the entire town, approximately 25.9 million or 76.1% <laughs> of the budget of revenue and appropriated fund balance has been recorded to date. And this includes approximately $16.8 million um, from real estate taxes. Since we are at the end of the second quarter for 2018, Page three of the financial report contains the seven year from 2012 to present comparison summary of expenses and revenues as of June 30th. The percentages are fairly consistent across the board and the town as a whole continues to trend in a positive direction this year. There's no significant concerns that have been identified by the controller's office at this time. This concludes the financial report for June 2018. Thank you, Rick, and um, <coughs> uh, thank you, Rick, for being here tonight in uh, Comptroller Seely's place, who had some uh, light surgery last week and is on the mend. Um, as she said to me before uh, uh, leaving work last week, um, there's nothing in the financial report, meaning <laughs> often there's something glaring that needs to be pointed out, whether positive or negative, but this month a relatively... Uh, 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 normal month on par with where we want things to be. So no surprises, good or bad, in there this month. I will take a motion to accept the financial report. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Report is accepted. Let's move on to approval of minutes. June 12, 2018, the workshop meeting. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Any questions or revisions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Mr. Wainer of the extension. Minutes are approved. Madam Clerk? June 19th, 2018, the regular town board meeting. Motion. Moved. And a second? Second. Any questions, comments, or revisions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Seat. Mr. Wainer abstains. Uh, ayes in the four. With that, Madam Clerk, before the public hearing, we can actually move on to... Uh, some of our resolutions. Uh, we can actually uh, start with resolution number four, items for board action. Authorizing a settlement agreement. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. This uh, would approve a settlement agreement uh, over the re re assessment, assessed value with uh, um, what is known as the Holiday Inn Express Wells Fargo uh, LLC. Um, it was negotiated uh, with, by the town assessor, the attorney for the town for assessment and provided to the board at their recommendation. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number five, filling a conservation board vacancy. Motion. Moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Kelly, explanation please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, yes, this would appoint Maria Thomas Fisher, and she is uh, somewhere. There she is, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. Um, to the Conservation Board, um, as we had a vacancy, um, I, we think that uh, Maria's experience as a leader in the community will lend itself well to, uh, to this board, and uh, she'll be a great asset. So, thank you. Thank you, and as always, we appreciate uh, our residents who uh, serve in all of our volunteer boards. Uh, I know our Conservation Board is one of our most 
energetic. And uh, um, the good thing about this is often we have people who are in land use or preservation that want to serve on the board, but uh, Ms. Fisher brings a different requisite experience, which I think is very valuable, uh, serving in a number of leadership capacities throughout the community. And I'm uh, very happy to support this, and uh, thank you for putting your name forward. Any uh, questions or comments or applause? Or Thank you, Maria. <laughs> well, we got a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Uh, Maria is appointed. Would you please stand up and be recognized? Thank you. Yeah. Item number six, calling for a public hearing on the matter of granting a special use permit for 2,256 2, Hudson Avenue, ESNL Federal, Cre Federal Credit Union in a mixed-use commercial district. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. Uh, Ms. Ivers, explanation, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This is related to an application for a um, new ESL branch location. The special use permit is required because in the zoning district, anything with a drive-through uh, requires one. And so this is setting the public hearing, referring it to the planning board for their comment, and also um, acknowledging the planning board's intent to serve as lead agents for the purposes of SEEKER. Thank you. Um, and on this matter, uh, the public hearing will take place next month. Can you just explain the concurrent process with uh, the planning board and perhaps the zoning board as well? Absolutely. So the, the application will be actually in front of all three boards. Um, the planning board will be handling site plan review associated with the redevelopment of this parcel. Um, this board will be contemplating the special use permit required for the drive-through facility um, associated with the development. And the zoning board will be um, looking at application related to relief for one of the um, the frontage requirements in the zoning district. All three boards will be coordinating um, environmental review with the planning board um, in t intending to serve as lead agency. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions or comments? This is simply calling the public hearing, which we will have next month, and perhaps keep open, perhaps not, but uh, the, at any event, the public hearing will take place next month here in the re town board meeting room, uh, Ju uh, August, where are we next? August 21st at 7.35 p.m. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number seven, authorizing the supervisor to transfer general fund balance to contractual structural repairs cabins at Camp Eastman. Motion. So moved. And a second. 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 Uh, I'll remark first and I'll uh, uh, yield to Mr. Kiley. Um, it's been brought to our attention uh, um, well, by observation of us as well as some feedback from residents that uh, our very old cabins, most of which are very old cabins at Camp Eastman, uh, need some, uh, I don't want to say minor repairs, but repairs that uh, might r be more cosmetic, uh, the decks, the flooring. We're certainly looking to upgrade um, as part of our capital improvement plan, uh, ultimately replacing some cabins, and I intend to, in the coming months, uh, put forth a resolution to reconstruct one cabin. However, in the interim, uh, the other cabins outstanding, we feel, um, need the work. And I think the work can commence uh, this year and, and get us throughout 2018. Uh, and with that, I'll yield to Mr. Kiley and then open it up for questions or comments. Mr. Kiley? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, the, the project entails certain repairs to uh, the majority of the decks at the cabins at Camp Eastman. Uh, there are three cabins and one lodge at Camp, uh, the Kiwanis, the Rotary, and the Legion, uh, as well as the Spees Conference Center. Uh, there's also an exterior uh, restroom. All of those uh, cabins uh, previously mentioned uh, are in need of repairs to the decks. It's actually the exterior decking uh, around those facilities. Uh, some are quite expansive, some are quite uh, small, but in general all um, are, are weathered and are in need of, of in some cases, uh, a complete deconstruction and reconstruction, in others just a rehabilitation. Uh, typically, the Department of Public Works and, and, and our staff members uh, maintain those decks, and it's, it's come to a point where uh, some of these are just beyond maintenance. It was in, uh, last reconstructed in the 1980s, and so the pressure-treated wood, after the constant salt usage to, to maintain a safe uh, uh, environment there when they're rented during the winter months, uh, has severely corroded uh, quite a bit of the, uh, the decking material of the supports 
the beams, the joists. And so this resolution uh, contracts with the Pike Company, uh, a general contracting firm, uh, piggybacking off of a Town of Greece contract for general contracting work uh, to rehabilitate, reconstruct several of the decks uh, at the, uh, the aforementioned cabins at Camp Eastman. Uh, further, there are some interior uh, um, upgrades that we would like to put forth uh, with, with this budgetary transfer, specifically uh, some flooring issues uh, within the uh, Kiwanis and Legion cabin, uh, as well as some exterior uh, fascia work to and gutter work to the rotary cabin uh, and some header work at the Spees Conference Center. Uh, so the Pike Company was a, a lowest bid on a publicly open bid through the town of Greece, and so we will be uh, piggybacking off of that contract, soliciting their uh, their efforts here in the total of fifty nine fifty eight thousand nine hundred and seventy eight dollars and seventy seven cents. Uh, the Pike Company, uh, I've de-scoped them on site. It appears that we're going to be able to get this work done within the next four weeks, uh, while not shutting down any of our cabins over the weekends as. Uh, they've already been rented. So happy to report that we will not be able, uh, we will not have to shut down any cabin uh, for the weekend. Uh, renters are still going to be able to utilize those facilities while upgrades are, are going on. Uh, th thank you. And um, I, I thank you, Bob, because um, I probably, the, sh the turnaround time on this is quick at my request. I wanted to make sure we had um, some work done in the short term. I'll note this does involve a transfer of fund balance. However, we are carrying several hundred thousand dollars worth of settlement money, which is always good to reinvest in, uh, as I say, brick and mortar. And uh, we're doing that. So this does involve a transfer of fund balance. However, we are carrying a growingly positive fund balance. So I think it's necessary to use that, use those reserves to make capital investments like this. So any questions or comments? No. I I, see These will be I done before the festivals? It's a four-week construction timeline, so we should be able to, with this board resolution, be in touch with uh, of the Pike Company tomorrow to begin mobilization. Thank you, Bob. Any further questions or comments? I also wanted to thank Commissioner Kiley for giving us such a very complete and detailed package in this very brief time. Thank you. It's appreciated. You're very welcome. Here we no further questions, comments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number eight. Authorizing the supervisor to enter into a contract with Spectrum for fiber internet access for the new public works facility. A motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kiley, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, the resolution before the town board this evening would uh, allow the town to contract with uh, Spectrum for uh, fiber internet uh, services. Uh, at the uh, town of Veronicoit, new Department of Public Works, which is l going to be built, going to be constructed at the 590-104 interchange. Uh, this would allow the building to have uh, internet, fiber internet at that location, in addition to having a point-to-point -point, uh, fiber intranet to uh, link town hall with that facility off-site. Previously, the town owned its own fiber network here on the town hall campus. Uh, obviously with the Department of Public Works relocating several miles away, uh, the cost in which to run fiber to that location is, is not feasible. Thus, we would contract with Spectrum uh, to have that intranet capability uh, to have point-to-point -point contact with the town hall and the town hall campus. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I know last year after the uh, DPW fire, it was a I would say learning experience, but we certainly learned a lot about our fiber optic cable and how it is routed through town. And... This is certainly a more efficient and effective and probably cost-effective way of doing it. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted with that. I'm going to ask Madam Clerk to call up our first public hearing. And before she does, I'll just note, I, um, uh, I, t I accidentally apologize. I took one of the sign-in sheets instead of public input. Um, if I have the sign-in sheets for two of the public hearings. If you do not sign up, um, that you can still come up and speak. Um, I'll exhaust the people who have signed up for each particular public hearing, um, but uh, um, if you do wish to come up and speak after those who have signed up come up, you're welcome to do so. Uh, in general, uh, comment at public hearings is uh, between three and five minutes. Certainly we don't want to cut anyone off, but please be mindful we have three public hearings tonight and a number of speakers who probably want to speak. With that, Madam Clerk, please call up public hearing number one. Okay. 
pertaining to the amendment of Article 6 of Chapter 164 of the Town Code of Arundaquoit relating to town property. Motion to open the public hearing. Move. And a second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing is open. Um, brief explanation for myself and my call uh, Commissioner Kiley up to give a broader overview and then we'll open it up to those who had signed up on this hearing. This public hearing um, would involve enacting a, uh, would involve a proposed local law to amend Chapter 164 of the Ironicoid Town Code as it relates to uh, our town properties. It's also known as the Town Property Ordinance. Um, this is what we call an omnibus uh, piece of legislation in that it addresses a number of elements and factors which are governed uh, by the town through our policies. Uh, those include parking, those include uh, pets, um, they include um, use of alcoholic beverages and also include the use of tobacco products. Um, we felt it necessary for a number of reasons and they sort of aligned together to do so. I will say that um, uh, the use, uh, two provisions in particular are re re for the most part new. They relate to tobacco and tobacco related products as well as firearms, um, one of which uh, I think tobacco and tobacco related products we, we propose just to keep up with um, I think where the world is headed on this. Most public outdoor facilities are stemming to be tobacco and tobacco product free. And that includes nicotine products. With regards to firearms, most uh, parks in Monroe County are firearm free. So in many ways this is just catching up with the rest of the world, but certainly uh, I think a worthy public safety measure. With that, I'm gonna call uh, our first witness being Commissioner Kiley. Commissioner Kiley, if you don't mind just coming up to the podium. And Bob, just um, at my request, I, I asked you just to get, walk us through the changes we're making because they do kind of hop around. Um, it's a broad bill, but just walk us through what we are revising with re regards to um, uh, maintaining and uh, regulating our town properties. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Good evening, town board members. Uh, the local law that I'm presenting tonight uh, includes a variety of amendments to Chapter 164 of the Town Code of the Town of Irondequoit. Uh, those uh, uh, sections were uh, delivered to you. Uh, the section of code that relates specifically to the town hall uh, and town properties uh, being all properties owned by the town. Uh, the town ha hall itself, the facilities, the parks, the playgrounds, etc. There are a variety of changes within this section of law, thus I'll move through uh, and review each section uh, for the board and the public this evening. Um, the beverage clause within this legislation uh, is modified to clarify the locations a person may have in his or her possession an alcoholic beverage uh, with intent to consume. Uh, these areas are designated as the lodges at Camp Eastman, the 4th of July Beverage Garden, uh, and the Oktoberfest site. Uh, this le legislation also affords a process by which an entity uh, may request a waiver uh, for an event being held on town property. Uh, the household pets clause uh, further defines uh, that dogs and cats are permitted on town properties. However, uh, they must be held in control on a leash. Uh, with the creation of our uh, many new rec fields uh, that we see at Camp Eastman and here on Kings Highway, uh, we found it necessary to further define that household pets have to be uh, held on leash on town properties. Uh, this legislation also creates a new clause which prohibits uh, the use of ATVs, snowmobiles, and uh, dirt bikes, motorbikes, on town property itself. Again, for the aforementioned uh, uh, town uh, uh, properties that were just recently constructed, uh, being our, our recreation field, soccer lacrosse at Camp Eastman, and our baseball he, uh, fields here uh, at uh, the town hall campus, we found it necessary to, uh, to close this loop. Uh, this legislation, as the supervisor mentioned, uh, bans the use of tobacco and tobacco-related products on town property. Uh, the health impacts of smoking and tobacco products are, are well known and have been well chronicled. Uh, here locally in Monroe County, the city of Rochester and the town of Henrietta uh, have taken action to ban smoking in parks, the city of Rochester, and uh, smoking in town facilities, the town of Henrietta. Uh, this legislation bans uh, the use of products on all town property uh, unless otherwise posted in a designated area. 
although e-cigarettes are promoted as a healthier alternative to tobacco use uh, by the vaping industry uh, abroad, uh, research has shown that there may be still some long-term uh, health risks uh, for users and secondhand emissions. Uh, recently, the state of New York has banned e-cigarettes and vapes at all public and private uh, grounds, uh, school grounds, and this legislation that is being proposed tonight restricts the use of all vapes, uh, vapes pens, uh, e-cigarettes, and, and those related products uh, to, again, designated areas. Um, this legislation also bans the possession of firearms, bow and arrow, switchblade, knives, and other dangerous uh, weapons on town property. Uh, here locally in Monroe County, uh, many suburban municipalities have already prohibited the possession of firearms on town property. Uh, those uh, towns, those municipalities include the town of Brighton, the town of Webster, the town of Ogden, and the town of Pittsford. Uh, further, even more municipalities have prohibited the discharge of firearms on uh, a town park land. Uh, those include the aforementioned, in addition to the town of Greece, Parrington, Parma, Chilai Gates, Henrietta Menden, um, and as well as Monroe County Parks Department and all the, uh, the county parks. It should be noted that this legislation uh, does exempt the Aronicoit Bow Hunt Program participants who are um, participating uh, legally in accordance with uh, Chapter 93 and Chapter 132 of the Town Code of the Town of Aronicoit. It also exempts uh, law enforcement officers and peace officers from that uh, uh, legislation. Lastly, this revision to the section of Town Code enables uh, another uh, re uh, revision to the Town Code, excuse me, uh, enables a mechanism uh, by which the town can enforce paid parking uh, on town properties. The town operates uh, one such location at the Irondequoit Bay State Marine Park. Uh, there are various signage at this facility uh, which have been posted directing patrons to the park uh, that uh, one lot is a, a vehicle and trailer lot and that, that lot is a paid parking lot. This clause, uh, if this legislation is enacted, would allow uh, the town to better enforce uh, parking issues at the Irondequoit Bay State Marine Park. Uh, currently, we are enforcing uh, state parks laws with regard to that, and this would uh, allow the town to enforce its own legislation, its own laws with regard to the parking enforcement at that location. Um, with that, that's my uh, presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions from the town board. Thank you, Bob, for the broad overview. Any questions for the commissioner? Okay, uh, Commissioner, you're excused. If we need you for further uh, questions or comments, we'll call you back up. With that, um, I had one one uh, resident signed up to speak on this particular public hearing. However, um, if you did not sign up and wish to address the board on uh, public hearing number one, you're free to do so after our first and only uh, speaker to sign up. And she is Ginny Nacy, 122 Old, Old North Hill. Good evening. I'm Jenny Nacy. I'm also the president of Drug Free Arondequoit, and I'm here to um, uh, address you about the uh, about our feelings on this, and also accompanied by a couple of members from our advocacy and legislation committee. So, Drug Free Arondequoit is a broad-based coalition of stakeholders in the town of Arondequoit, committed to nurturing happy, healthy, drug-free youth in Arondequoit. The coalition strives to create systemic change of beliefs, attitudes, perceptions, and practices associated with the use of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs among youth families in the community at large. The coalition supports proposed amendments to subdivision J of section six of chapter 164 of the Arundaquite Town Code to prohibit the use of tobacco and tobacco-related products on town properties. This amendment is one of multiple amendments being proposed to Chapter 164 of the Town Code, which governs the use of town properties. Defy Together does not take a position on the other proposed amendments at this time, but only the proposed changes involving tobacco and tobacco-related products. We support the legislation's broad definition of the types of substances and devices that would pro be prohibited with the passage of this amendment. Cigarettes and smokeless tobacco products have been traditional methods of nicotine consumption, but new devices such as e-cigarettes, vaping, jewels, have emerged as alternatives to the traditional methods of tobacco use. Such devices have been found to contain certain toxic chemicals in addition to nicotine. 
The broader based language in this legislation includes the newer vehicles used to dispense nicotine products. Including these me methods in the legislation continues to help our community keep pace with the 21st century technology products and maintains the original intent of the legislation, which is to help support and cultivate healthier community settings in the town of Irondequoit. Additionally, research states that the tobacco remains the number one contributor of preventable disease and death in this country. There is documented evidence of the harmful side effects of nicotine on youths developing brains. There exists a strong correlation between adolescent smoking and the association, association with later life behavioral issues. Statistics also show that some 90% of all adult smokers start by the age of 18 and that three of four youth smokers eventually transition into long-term addicted smokers. As the caring community of Irondequoit, we can work together to provide ha healthier and happier environments in the town. Irondequoit town spaces provide us with the opportunity to interface with the larger community of citizens working and playing together. Therefore, it makes good sense to limit exposure to tobacco-related products and their harmful effects. <coughs> Restated, Defy Together strongly supports Subdivision J of Section 6 of Chapter 164 of the Irondequoit Town Code, which restricts the use of all tobacco and tobacco-related products on town properties. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nacy. Would anyone else in the audience wish to address the board on the first public hearing? Come on up. Please just state your name and uh, address for the record and any organization you're affiliated with. My name is Lexi Popovich, uh, 1595 Elmwood Avenue, and I'm with the Smoking Health Action Coalition. I just want to thank uh, the board and the supervisor for bringing forward this proposed legislation to amend the code involving uh, prohibiting tobacco and tobacco products on town property. So I work with various towns around Monroe County who have uh, implemented this and are working to implement this and as, as stated before the health benefits are, are noted and there's just some stats I'd like to to read off um, so every year in New York State 3,000 people die annually from secondhand smoke and currently cigarette butts are the most littered item in the US and they cause things such as fire hazards various uh, risks to children youth and uh, different animals and they also pose a risk to some of the waterways and hiking trails as well. Secondhand smoke uh, contains over 7,000 chemicals and 70 cancer-causing agents. Secondhand smoke increases a non-smoker's risk of developing heart disease and lung cancer by 20 to 30 um, percent. Anecdotally, um, I know a lot of people with asthma. I, I suffer from asthma, and I, I go to many parks. I hike. I run, and even passing by anyone who smokes, it affects me it affects my breathing sometimes I'll stop running and some of the drift it's it's a nuisance and I think what the town of Rondequay is proposing is something that can benefit all families all residents all all youth that play and that are trying to go to parks and have active lifestyles and really focus on the quality of life for all residents and also as an environmental uh, aspect I think it protects you know, some of the groundwater, the waterways, there's a lot of chemicals in there and different risks to animals. So I want to thank the, the board for proposing this, and I think it's something that could benefit a lot of people, mostly some youth that do suffer from asthma and experience this. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anyone else wish to address the board? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to close public hearing. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is closed. We will table any uh, related resolutions for at this time. And Madam Clerk, would you please call up the second public hearing? Public hearing number two. On the matter of a proposed local law to add a new chapter establishing a community choice aggregation CCA program in the town of Arundaquai. Motion to open the public hearing. Moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Hearing is now uh, open. I'll uh, give some brief uh, parameters and overview of the uh, proposed uh, legislation. And then I think we have a number of residents who wish to uh, come up and, and speak. I will call the folks who have signed up on the list, and certainly if anyone 
who hadn't signed up by the time I swiped the list wishes to come up, please, we encourage you to do so. Um, the proposed uh, local law would adopt the Community Choice Aggregation Law in the town of Irondequoit, otherwise known as CCA. CCA is a policy that empowers local governments to determine the source of electricity on behalf of its residents and small businesses, reflecting local resources, priorities, and challenges. One of those priorities I think is of interest to this town board, I won't speak for my colleagues entirely, but is the potential to source our electricity from uh, potentially, hopefully, upwards of 100% renewable energy gen generation. Uh, under such programs, energy delivery, I'll note, remains uh, the responsibility of the distribution utility. In our case, that's Rochester Gas and Electric. Uh, this proposed law establishes the authority for the town in, co in connection with the implementation of a CCA program to acquire utility data to select through a competitive solicitation process energy suppliers on behalf of the participating consumers, who in this case are our ratepayers, within the jurisdictional boundaries of the town to maximize value for participating consumers. It also allows the town to potentially collaborate with other local governments to form an inter intermunicipal program, as was done down in Westchester County with a demonstration program put into place, I believe, in 2015, I believe. Um, as a result, consumers have the opportunity to, to both lower and stabilize their energy costs, to spur local clean energy innovation and investment, and to reduce their environmental impact thereby fulfilling the promises of the proposed chapter. In short, um, if you were to provide a 30,000 foot explanation, this allows us, the town, to pool together and aggregate our bargaining power to leverage a lower fixed uh, bulk utility rate uh, from energy suppliers as opposed to a more uh, historically variable rate uh, that is offered by default by the utility. Um, this is a require, I'll note, this legislation is the first step of a lengthy, uh, thought, thoughtful process that is required uh, by a order uh, from the New York State Public Service Commission for any municipality exploring a CCA program. And, and adopting this legislation would simply allow the town to procure the services of an administrator uh, to um, purchase or broker that bulk power on the behalf of the ratepayers. I will note one thing uh, in particular, this is not a mandatory program. Ratepayers within any municip municipal boundaries are free to opt out, free of charge at any time, as is stated in the legislation. Um, I think this uh, law is the first, of, uh, first step of what could be a very promising process. I believe our town has done a terrific job in the, with the support of the town board and being a leader in uh, utilizing uh, renewable clean energy. We're one of the first uh, clean energy communities in upstate New York. Um, and we're happy to continue exploring ways to provide a more uh, sustainable future for our community. And um, with that, I will call um, our first signed up witness for the public hearing. And again, if you did not s sign up, uh, I will uh, open it up for a further public comment. Again, between three and five minutes, we don't dissuade people, but just be mindful there are a number of people willing to speak. So uh, first we have, uh, I believe, Dan Wing from 139 Thistledown Drive. Mr. Wayne. Um, in Illinois, they tried this and it was very popular and the rates went down 30%, which is great. But after a number of years, people got out because the rates didn't stay down. Competitively, they got better options elsewhere. Uh, one of the issues of opting out, even at that time, after they were in for a while, or exit fees. And uh, that's up to the, you know, who's in the program, but uh, there are some pretty stiff exit fees. Uh, another reason it's given to get, you know, to get in the program is local generation of non-carbon sources. 2017 in New York State, upstate generation, according to the NYISO, which is the New York Independent System Operator, the grid operator, 88% of upstate generation was already from non-carbon generation sources, okay? Um, reading further, not by NYISO, but the people, your administrators got to be a company. The companies that go out and purchase the electricity, they're always 
you know, it's, it's a constant market of how much it's going to cost them. And uh, they, they're going to go out and they cannot, it just isn't possible to get 100% renewable. Part of that is the Renewable Portfolio Standard, RPS, says it's got to be such and such. They can't get more. The second is it's just not going to happen. Once it's into the grid, it's a mix of all types of electricity from all over the place, possibly even from Canada. You're not going to control the location it came from, nor are you going to control the types that are actually uh, come into people's homes. Um, another question is, does renewable energy include nuclear generated electricity that's non-carbon? Our governor says it does. How much nuclear are you going to allow? And do you want that? Okay. Um, the company selected, you've got a request for a proposal, I assume, the contract, uh, and what the town law is going to say. Um, did I see that you guys are going to want um, uh, solar energy put into the town? Are you going to lease that property? Are you going to buy it? Are you going to demand some private citizens give up property? What is going to be the nature of that? And once that equipment is there, if that company belly, it goes belly up to put it there, is the town on the line to pay, you know, for that, uh, for the loans that that company put on that equipment? That would be in your contract, but something to think about. Um, the opt-out itself, you said it can happen right from the start. Is that when the RFP happens? Uh, is that tonight? Um, Okay, I'm just asking, okay? You don't have to answer. I'm just saying these are things to consider. Um, the, uh, there were pro problems with the community already in trouble at Kent Cost of California. They were in financial trouble. They did this program and they went bankrupt. And it really put them under. I don't know the reasons, but it, um, taxpayers, will they be on the line if something fails? If a company goes bankrupt, that's doing this program for you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in the, in the uh, literature, it says all purchase discounts are passed on to town members. To me, that's not realistic. Whatever company you hire to be your administrator, they have high-priced people working for them. They have equipment they have to pay for. They have offices they have to run. Somebody's going to get a cut of that money, not all the discount that is obtained in purchasing bulk is going to come to the ratepayer. Um, and finally, this really is kind of deals with it, but does not Hopkins County, which is where Ithaca, New York is, that area, NYSERDA, um, gave a grant to, for them to build a renewable energy generation facility in Tompkins County. Tompkins County was counting on the renewable energy certificates, often called renewable energy credits, RECs, to make money for the town for the, in this case, the county, Tompkins County. NYSERDA gave them a grant. The county built the facility, which generated the, the renewable energy power for local use. And NYSERDA came back and said, we gave you a grant. You can't double up. You can't get renewable energy credit cash in free cash with NYSERDA. We're clawing it back. Good luck. And Tompkins County said, we're out of this. I hope that doesn't happen with you guys if you get into wrecks. And one thing is, if Tompkins County had stayed in there, they can come, the NYSERDA could come after projects that have been funded by the grants, et cetera, at local high schools, at local um, parks, local citizens, et cetera, that the state helped pay for. That was 2016. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. A lot, lot to consume there, and I'll try and get any answers that we can to you 
uh, in short order. Next up is uh, Scott Van Duzen. Scott Van Dusen, I believe, uh, 102 Maple Hurst Road. If I said any of that wrong, please correct the record. Hello. Um, and this marks my 30th uh, year as a resident of the town of Rondequoit. I'm here with uh, our PCC, Mothers Out Front, the Sierra Club. And will everyone raise their hands that's here tonight? <laughs> Why is everyone sitting back? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm scary looking, mm -hmm. but... Thank you for allowing the CCA legislation to be on the agenda tonight. The climate crisis is an increasingly urgent issue and we ask the Aronicoit town board members to prioritize passing the CCA legislation and prioritize 100% renewable electricity mix. This is an opportunity for the town of Aronicoit to use the market to grow our local renewable supply. The goal is to negotiate lower fixed rates and a cleaner energy supply. The decision making for electric supply is relocated to local municipal governments. CCA programs can be designed to grow local jobs by encouraging the growth of local renewable energy production. Notably, the village of Lima, town of Geneva, and village of Brockport have passed the local law and selected Juul as their administrator because of the desire to have renewable energy as the default supply. We urge the town of Aronicoit to join with the six other towns in Monroe County in moving CCA forward. We also urge the town of Aronicoit to join the other communities committed to renewable energy by moving forward with CCA. Yes, CCA is complex, however, it is the responsibility and obligation of decision makers such as yourselves to use power towards voting on policies that will ensure a livable climate for our children. And I've been uh, a reader of science and subscribed to the NASA JPL newsletters when they were in print form, so that's how long I've been you know, on par with what's going on with our climate. Many of you will recall ozone depletion. We are at a point now where we can only mitigate the problem. It's that sad. You have the power to make this happen. For the sake of all the children in the face of climate change, I urge you to put in a motion of a vote of yes tonight. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Uh, next to sign up, we have uh, Tammy Irvin. 97 Corley Drive. Good evening. I still haven't gotten a shirt yet. Oh. I don't know if we wear the same size. Yeah, probably. Uh, and I have to be completely honest, I thought I was just signing in, so but I'm happy to be up here. Um, I am a proud member of Mothers Out Front and a resident of East Aronicoit with a very young son, and I work with uh, children with disabilities. And 100% renewable energy is something very important to myself, as it is the rest of mothers out front. And this would be a great opportunity to um, lead Aronicoit to that. Um, and I want to thank you for putting uh, CCA legislation on for tonight's public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Andrea Porter, uh, 2674 St. Paul Boulevard. Good evening. Good. Um, and you can cross off Ethan Porter. I'm speaking for both of us. Oh, okay. One nice person. <laughs> so yes, I'm Andrea Porter. I'm a second generation Aranda Quite resident. When I speak, it's with consideration of two younger generations of my family also living here. Um, with good reason, I'm proud of all of you. Not only is Aranda Quite the first New York climate smart community in Monroe County, you continue to step forward with environmental conscious uh, actions. Um, with Governor Cuomo tasking the Public Service Commission to make it easier for municipalities to transition um, off of fuel, uh, fossil fuels to meet renewable energy goals, uh, community choice aggregation, CCA, becomes a focus. Um, and that's why I'm here tonight. Our Rundequite Mothers Out Front team has worked at educating ourselves and neighbors to better understand CCA. Meanwhile, it's obvious our town board has done the same thing. Thank you for that. We've all learned that the enabling law for CCA is non-binding, of no cost to the town, therefore easy to pass. Um, we've also learned that all CCAs are not equal. 
So a next decision will be to choose an administrator for it. And from what we know, the administrator team of RPCC or Rectricity and Jewel have focused on transitioning to 100% renewable energy. Um, their move forward will include implementing and incentiv uh, incentivizing sustainability goals. This includes energy efficiency, local employment, and local no renewable energy integration. And um, from RPCC, and I, uh, I do have the comparison, and you may have already seen it, of three different. Um, do me a favor and hand, if you don't mind sharing it with the yeah. town clerk, she'll disseminate yeah, copies here. to us. Thank you. Like anything, I'm sure I can find it on the internet. Yes. Um, my hope tonight is that we pass the CCA enabling law and we choose Jewel Energy and, and Rectricity as the administrator organizer D with a default mix of 100% renewables. Um, thank you to all the board. Um, we ha do have uh, Melissa Carlson here from Rectricity. And she was going to just speak and clarify a few CCA things for us. Just thank you. Please, um, Ms. Carlson, just state your name and uh, address for the record. My name is Melissa Carlson. I live at 246 Castle Bar Road. And I'm a member of Rochester People's Climate Coalition. I'm also Rocktricity, which is the group that spun off of RPCC to run uh, CCA and be a company. Um, I. I w you've done a great job of explaining what CCA is, and I commend where you are so far. Um, the way CCA works for other people who aren't aware of it is right now, as an individual, you and I can choose a supply company, but we can only choose an energy supply company. We can only choose what's already out there. When we get a whole bunch of people together, which is everybody in Irondequoit and maybe everybody in other communities together, then we can write our own contract and what RPCC is excited about is when we, the reason we're backing this is we want 100% renewable energy as an option for everybody. So the contract, the way we look at it, is going to say we want a fixed price for two years. The law says by the PSC that the price will be lower than the standard utility rate. So you won't get, as was before mentioned, a low rate that then hikes up because the PSC wants to protect everybody from those scams. So the price will be lower than the utility was for the past two, two past one year, we would like to have a fixed price for two years and we want a 100% renewable option. We take all of us together and take that contract to a supplier and say, here, give us your best price. And those, con those suppliers are not little companies. They're, they're somebody that we've gone through RFPs for and, and figured out who they are and what they're capable of doing, what their insurance is. Jewel, who we're partnering with, has done all this before and has all the technical and legal expertise to go through this process again, and they've already vetted a number of bigger companies. Then those companies come back and give you a price, and then the town signs up for it. After the town says, this is what we are gonna join, then there's a two-month period of educating everybody. Everybody in the town is gonna get a letter saying, here's what this is. This isn't Big Brother. Right now, Big Brother is RG&E. You can't choose your utility. This is bringing it local and making it possible for the town to choose what your priorities are. And in that two months, I'm going to be answering the phone, not you guys. That it's, it's not going to be hopefully nothing for the town. If anybody calls you, you just say, here, talk to them. Talk to the administrator. So then we'll be answering the questions. We'll be helping people opt out. The PSC allows... 0 0.001 cent per kilowatt hour fee to be paid to the administrator. That amounts to five or six dollars per household per year. Um, right now I've been volunteering for two years, so I'm not getting high fees. And that fee will be support, will be split between Juul and RPCC and will only be spent on administration. Um, I'm not going to be going out and hiring anybody. <coughs> to do other things. So that uh, once the, the CCA starts after a couple of months of this administra uh, uh, education, then everybody will still have the op ability to opt in and opt out. And, uh, and we hope you will choose 100% renewable. Right now, Juul is the only one that is allowed by the PSC to incorporate local 
renewables and the state is subsidizing local renewables because it's better to have something generated right here and put on short wires to get to the people who are using it. And so that's cheaper energy. We include that in and then that credit gets passed along to the consumers. So it guarantees renewables and cheaper renewables for all of your constituents. And uh, for anybody, I'll stick around until after the hearing is over for any other questions that any of you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board on the public hearing? Don't be shy. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, do you mind just saying your address if possible? Oh, yeah, 84 Middlesex Road, formerly of 501 Seneca Park Avenue. Thank you very much. That's the old family homestead. Okay. <laughs> I thank you for allowing me to speak. Although I'm not currently a resident, I graduated IHS in 1974. And I was very lucky to attend there at here at a time when the Environmental Action Club, an act, was established with the Cubic Sisters. In the lead, we students, I know you can't see a student when you look at me now, but <laughs> we students influenced the town to set up the very first Irondequoit recycling program, self-serve, behind the town hall. That experience taught us in a way no textbook could that it is our privilege and our duty to advocate as citizens for policies and laws we have researched and think will be for the common good. And that citizen action matters. Um, I am not at all surprised that Irondequoit is the first suburb in Monroe County to have a Mother's Out Front chapter. Um, I'm proud to be a daughter of Irondequoit and not at all surprised that you um, want to do this. And I ask you to be true conservatives in conserving the many environmental advantages that make Irondequoit such a marvelous place to live and true progressives in adopting policies and laws suited to the nature of our present challenges. Um, I'm an activist working to try to mitigate what is coming down the road as possibly the greatest environmental disaster in the history of humankind. Um, if you take this lead, it will help us to convince other towns and to get Mayor Warren to make good on her pre-election commitment to en enact a, a sustainable energy CCA in the city. Um, a coalition of as many Monroe County municipalities as possible could get everyone an even lower price. So I'm asking you to please go right ahead and pass some climate friendly CCA. I also want to say of the gentleman who got up here first, I really appreciate him coming up and bringing up any questions that need to be answered and I certainly hope he will give you citations on any areas where problems have been found so that you can see if they're relevant to what you're trying to do or not relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board in the public hearing? No. Don't be shy. I could speak, but I'm not a resident. You can speak. No, that's, we don't speak. preclude. Uh, Say your name and uh, address for the uh, record. Uh, I'm Ram Shrivastava from Larson Engineers. Our consulting practice is in Henrietta, or Brighton, I should say, uh, Brighton, Henrietta, Townline Road area. But this is a very important topic, and I congratulate you for bringing it up and putting across for the community. So from environmental point of view, uh, I've been in town since 69 and quite a bit involved with green and sustainable energy. Uh, you had a green task force in the town of Aranda quite way back and they wrote the report, so I was able to participate as a volunteer. So please do it, it's a good thing to do. Solar power is now come down to a cost that anybody can do it. Uh, when you combine the uh, consumption it makes it easier to negotiate. The biggest problem solar developers face is, okay, we can invest the money, build the system, who's gonna buy the power? And for them to go to each business or homeowners and whatnot, it's quite a complex task. This makes it easy for someone who makes the power to just sell it to one customer, your CCA, and provide the 100% green energy 
to the grid. So it's the right approach. It simplifies things. Hope, hopefully other towns will do it. But there is no shortage of land areas within RG&E which are sitting idle. Uh, these are projects that are not built on residential lots or high value property because it takes a lot of room. But the state has programs to build it on landfills. We ourselves got one project built in town of Williamson on their landfill. Brockport is considering building on landfill. There are a couple of projects in Lewis County that are on landfill. So any contaminated property, low value property that's next to a power line is ideal. And the new laws that NYSERDA at PSC has passed <coughs> gives extra grant if you build it on property which is not going to be used for anything anyway. So it's the right thing to do from the consumption side. It helps the developers to then, if they know there is a CCA, to build these large projects somewhere on the grid, put the power in, and sell it to the CCA. So I congratulate you and hope it goes well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else wish to address the board? Going once, going twice. I'll now take a motion to close public hearing. So moved. And a second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The public hearing is closed. Um, it is a general town policy to uh, uh, not adopt um, a local law um, uh, the same night as the hearing unless there's uh, extraordinary circumstances. So with that, I'm going to... Uh, Put, li likely declare my intent to put this up for adoption next month. We certainly welcome public feedback, um, but I plan on putting this up for ad adoption and uh, hope uh, the board members uh, continue to research the uh, program and the initiative and um, hopefully next month look forward to adopting this. With that, Madam Clerk, please move on to the third public hearing. Item number three on the matter of a proposed local law to amend Chapter 93 of the Code of the Town of Arundaquite relating to the bow hunt program. Thank you, Madam Clerk. My motion to open public hearing? Moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is open. Um, this is a local law that would amend Chapter uh, 93 of the Town of Arundaquite Code, uh, which governs our bow hunt program, which is most residents are familiar with. Uh, implements the goals of our deer management program, which has been in effect since the uh, mid-90s. Um, since the late 90s, we have had a bow hunt program uh, run with the oversight of our Ronaquai Police Department. In uh, last year, as a result of a, uh, a, a Supreme uh, Supreme Court decision or Fourth Appellate Supreme Court decision, New York Supreme Court, uh, the town, at the request of Judge Standard, um, revised its uh, uh, policies governing the deer management program, the bow hunt program, to provide uh, more regulatory structure in overseeing the program. Uh, while still allowing it to meet its goals of managing the deer population. Um, in adopting uh, the amendments to town code, um, the town board at the time put in a provision uh, that uh, specifies that the size of the deer population must be assessed uh, biannually. Um, and the town board was uh, charged with um, coming up with a mechanism to do so. Um, in the intervening time, uh, the Department of Environmental Conservation, whom we administer this program on their behalf, really. They, um, we, we do this on behalf of the state, in, in essence. Uh, through a letter from uh, Sue Booth Binzik, the wildlife, bi wildlife biologist out of Albany, uh, one thing that she affirmed was that DEC does not recommend attempting to evaluate the program's success by estimating deer numbers. Deer population estimation, I quote, particularly in developed environments, is difficult, expensive, and notoriously inaccurate. Furthermore, there would be no clear way to set a target population number as a management objective because a multitude of variable factors determine the number of deer that can sustainably live in an area, and every location is different. Management program assessment methods should be based on the impacts of concern and focus on the stated objectives, end quote. Um, in doing so, Ms. Smith uh, from D, Ms., uh, excuse me, Ms. Booth Binzik advised the town on behalf of DC that um, uh, an assessment of the herd population would not be the most prudent way to uh, oversee the or measure the efficacy of the program, but did recommend uh, a few instruments by which I think we can uh, put um, uh, into effect, one of which measures uh, the growth of wildlife strategically. Um, I think that's a, uh, there's some methodology that's been adopted particularly by uh, Cornell University to allow it to do that, to give you a good baseline. From there you can measure how many deer are consuming wildlife. 
also they have informed us that a very good uh, barometer of measuring the size of the deer herd and the efficacy of the, the effectiveness of the program is measuring deer related MVAs, which we do. Any deer related MVA uh, that occurs is uh, clocked by our police department and we uh, do aggregate that data on an annual basis and have seen a historical downturn since the uh, Im implementation of the program. So uh, this law is uh, put forth the public hearing tonight um, to make an amendment in, in effect to uh, strike Subdivision K uh, of Section 93-1 of the Town Code of the Town of Irondequoit. With that, I will um, call forth our residents who have uh, signed up to speak, and certainly if you do not sign up but wish to do so, you uh, may. And first up is uh, Jeannie Colombo, 95 Huntington Hills. Good evening. Um, I'm getting tired of coming about deer. I just would like to live in my neighborhood and to get this kind of resolved. This is the third amendment you've made in two years to the deer regulations. Um, the question was two years ago when we started in March of 2016 is how many deer are there? It's been two years. Is there an answer? Does anybody know? So you've had two years. I've, I, I had the concern of that gentleman there that is, you know, the, in, the environment. I thought, okay, it's great to have an environmental law, but who's following through with the detail? So it's been two years. You don't know what you've got. Uh, you get a letter after the deadline from a, a woman in Albany who says there are no licensed biologists, but she's a biologist. I don't know if Jim Eckler still exists, but he was out of Avon, and he used to do the spotlight surveys. And, um, and looking back at 2002, they did them for 10 years for you. They did them twice a year. They did them in September and October. They had two sets of observers, one car, one cart. They did the county uh, park, and they did Irondequoit. And that's what they did. And I don't think it cost you very much money at all to do that. You've spent over $30,000 in legal fees so far, and it's not going to end. Um, you've changed the law in April to assist one hunter, so you're starting to um, focus in who you want to help. And all I'm saying is, is why don't you go back to the spotlight checks? I'm sure Mr. Eckler or whoever took over for him in Avon could tell you how to do it, but he set it forth in his documentation that you have. So it's really simple. It's not expensive. Litigation costs you more. It's costing you about 15000 a year. You're up to over $30,000 just to try to come up with a solution when you just need to hire a couple of people to go do the spotlight check. Um, if you want to deal with, with uh, MVA, um, I don't want to say MVAs, with accidents relating to deer, okay, how many deer died in 2016 by um, car accidents? Did that just include a rounder court? Or are you picking up um, the park down on Lake Road? How are you going to do that? Do any of you even know? yourselves? Has, have any of you even checked to find that out? You took, you killed 107 deer last year through the bow hunting program. You didn't have any um, parameters. You just let them kill as many as they could. So what I'm saying is, is this a culling program or is this a killing program? I am not opposed to the culling program, but what you're turning this into is a killing program. And so if you don't want to have deer, you should articulate that what you're, what you're going to do in the next few years is just kill the herd off. And you say you can't do it, but you don't know because you're taking out 100 deer a year. In 2002, they, were on, they only counted 125 deer. So you're getting close to killing them all off, if that was your intent, as opposed to culling them. Um, with respect to one thing that I do point out to you is in your bow hunting program, just for your own edification, you said that uh, hunters acknowledge that participation in the program is a privilege and not a right. Uh, that's starting to change. Um, if you read your most recent law, um, the court is saying that once you set up a hunting site as a permanent one and it's approved, it's no longer a privilege. It's a, it's a right of the hunter. So what's going to happen, because it's a slippery slope, and I'm just pointing this out to you, is what you need to think about, you won't, but you should, is that once you make a site permanent without ever being reviewed, You've given the, the, the tail, which was the hunter, he gets to swing the tiger around, and that would be you. And, you know, we don't want to do pun intended that then you get the, the tail of the deer gets to tell the deer what to do. You're supposed to be in charge of this program to keep it under control. What I'm saying is you're not paying attention. You're going ahead with 
making a, a, a site permanent, once you make a site permanent, you no longer have control. And right now we're suing you, the, believe me, those, those 50 hunters will start suing you also because if you say, well, I, we, we don't have any deer to kill anymore or we've met our, our standard, they can say, but you've made it a, a privilege, you took it from a privilege to my right to hunt on my property and you are no longer in control. And I would think that the town likes the concept of power and control to be in control. If you make your sites permanent, which you, what you're doing in this, this new uh, amendment, you make a big mistake. For, you know, for, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what you should do is every year review the sites and reapprove them. That keeps the control in you. The year, but that's not what is, being ha is, what is happening, is what's happening is you're allowing the site to be approved because it's easier, everything that we do is easier, so whatever the least um, difficult course is, you take. Don't do that for yourselves because you will no longer be in control of your own program. You will start to be sued by the owners of the land to say, hey, I have a right to hunt. You cannot stop me now from hunting. So pay attention to what you're doing if you do pay attention. Just, just for the record, um, the co we do know the cost of the um, of a spotlight survey, and annually it'd be twenty five thousand dollars, rough almost the cost of the litigation, but it would be annually twenty five thousand dollars. So this isn't done without c taking that into factor. Uh, next up, uh, Adam Stein uh, of uh, I believe Spring Valley. Hello, Mr. Stein. What I've handed out to you is just an outline of what I'm going over, so that way it's easy for you to refer to after this meeting. You'll, you'll have it right in your hands. So anyway, I only want to mention about three things. So the first proposed change that you had, Section 1, Purpose and Legislative Intent, um, this is about the metrics that the town will use to uh, evaluate the effectiveness of the program. What you actually have down is very vague in terms of what the town's actually going to do. You listed two metrics that the DEC mentioned, and you said there's others. It's very vague. And I know your website, especially on the Your Government page, uh, says how transparent you want your government to be. And I applaud that. So in the name of transparency, what I think you should do for this is you should list specifically what metrics the town will use, when and how they will be used, and the goals for each metric. As you mentioned before, vehicle accidents. What's the goal? Are you trying to get to zero? Are you trying to get to 20% less than the year before, whatever number that was? I mean, for every metric that you use, you can have a goal that you're shooting for. And with this data, not only can you easily track the effectiveness, but so can the rest of the town. Uh, you know, if it's up somewhere, like on the website, and you can see year by year how things are going, especially for the metrics that you choose to use. And, and we'll know how they're evaluated, when, during the year, and all that other stuff. And so I think that will help with transparency as far as that part of the Bohunt program goes. Uh, the next change you had was Section 2, Amendment to Code. This is uh, referring to the paragraph where you require, uh, which mentions what's required of a hunter in order to participate, like passing the course, the licenses, and the certifi certifi certificates needed. Now, um, in the first change you had, you listed actually why you were making the change. And that was very useful to, to see the thinking behind it. But in this one, all you said is we're, de we're deleting the paragraph. There's no explanation or anything. Now, I realize that you're deleting it because the content is repeated in other line items in that section uh, but it would have been nice that for any changes that you do list the reason, uh, just again for transparency so people know, oh, that's why they're doing it. I don't have to think about why they're changing it. It's because it, the information is duplicated. Uh, most of it is. However, what isn't duplicated and is left vague uh, is what is required for hunters regarding passing the course after their second year. Uh, the paragraph you're deleting is the only paragraph that says once a hunter passes the course twice and as long as they're in the program, they don't have to take the course again. You take that out and nothing else specifies that. Specifically, so it's very vague as to a hunter looking and say, "All right, there's something else that says I got to take the course first year, take the course second year, and then there's nothing." With this paragraph gone, there's, there's nothing more about it either way. And then the last thing I have is expanding the idea of consent. On the April 26 board meeting, Supervisor Shealy talked about consent. Uh, this eventually made its way into the regulations in Section 3, Item 16, Sub Item 3, and uh, the idea being that um, 
normally you would have a 150 foot limit between a hunter and a building or dwelling or whatever like that. But with a consent, you can bypass that limit and the hunter would be able to hunt where normally he would not be if the uh, adjoining neighbor there gave consent. And I thought that was a, a great idea. And so I like to see that expanded because um, that does take care of, of problems. And so uh, what I want to propose here is uh, about a hunting area. Now, the way I define hunting area is it's the size of the property plus any other adjoining lands that the hunter can be on. So let's say a hunter's property is half an acre, but he's next to a five-acre lot where the, you know, the, the neighbor said, yeah, you can use my five-acre lot. So now he has five and a half acres of hunting area. Okay, So when I mention hunting area, uh, what I'm thinking here is if it's less than two acres, need consent, again, this, this idea of consent from adjacent neighbors for approval. Now, consent in this case doesn't mean that the hunter can hunt on those properties where the neighbors gave consent because you have something else for that already. But it just means that those neighbors will realize and approve of that hunting will occur next to them, and they're fine with that. Okay? The idea being is for these small hunting areas that are really too small on their own, that the neighbors will agree to it and say, yeah, just like the 150 foot rule, yeah, okay, it's really too small, but we'll, we'll still go with it, it's okay. Now, the two acres number that I came up with is I've been talking to local bow hunters, I've been checking online forums where the discussion is about the minimum size uh, that uh, bow hunters would be comfortable with. And most of the responses have been two acres. There's been a few above two acres and only one response of one acre. So that's why I went with the two because that was the mostly, uh, the most, uh, the answer that was given the most was two acres. And so um, by having this consent, this would help with issues when the size of the hunting area would normally be too small, as I mentioned. So if you have a small little area, neighbors are all say, yeah, it's good. Then you avoid any kind of complications or issues because they're gonna know that there's gonna be hunting there and they're okay with it. Even if, if the property really is too small, or not the property, but the whole hunting area, property plus any other areas, uh, if there are any, uh, if it's really too small to really support bow hunting properly. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Stein. Appreciate you providing this as well. Next up, uh, Lisa Deloise, I believe also of Spring Valley. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks again for the opportunity to speak. I'm not as organized as Adam <laughs> is currently, but um, I'd like to uh, make a few points regarding uh, transparency, vagueness in the law, as well as killing versus calling, and metrics. So you've crafted our, our law uh, based on Monroe County DEC laws. And um, although I'm not a hunter, my very best friend is a hunter. So the information that I, I have that I hope you uh, also appreciate is that when um, a hunter applies for a um, license for big game hunting, in Monroe County or Ontario County or wherever, um, you get a permit for a buck, one buck, not two bucks, one buck. If you want to also pay a little extra fee, you can get a permit to take a doe, okay? And you could do that for bow hunting season, you could do that for rifle season, and later in the fall, you can do muzzle loading, okay? So a very aggressive or ad, ad, an advocate of hunting may, may take five, maybe six deer a year, um, probably two deer a year, but if you're bow hunting, um, that's the max for bow hunting, two deer, one buck, one doe, as far as I understand the rule. Um, now, some, some hunters or farmers may apply for a nuisance permit. You know, you own a farm, you got deer, you gotta keep the deer out, and that's unlimited. People who have nu nuisance permits can take unlimited numbers of deer. I'm assuming the town of Aronicoit must have some nuisance permit or crafted the bow hunt program on a nuisance concept whereby you allow hunters to take unlimited numbers of deer. Now we have a deer management program that manages the size of our herd. Which it's not done for that. sport, it's done with strategic well, hunters are taking deer out, uh, sorry, farmers are taking deer out because they're eating the crops, and you're taking deer out because you want to protect us, thankfully, from motor vehicle accidents. But the point that I really want to get to regarding all the legality of how the, the DEC really regulates the program, I mean, hunters who choose to obey the law, once they take a deer, they have, they have a permit for it, they call it in, right? They write down the person's name is on the permit tag, 
the where they got the deer, the date they got the deer, and then they call it into the DEC and they track that stuff to try to um, prevent people from, you know, break, you know, just the protected species. So they want to, you know, everybody wants to follow the law and they want to control the number of deer, deer that are taken, as do you, right? Our program is designed to, you know, monitor how many deer are taken. Um, we learned last year from uh, Officer McKacky, who has been in charge of the bow hunt program for many, many years, that they took 107 deer last year from around Kuwait. However, I um, wanted to know what, um, where those deer were taken. Okay, like what there was, I don't remember quite offhand how many sites there were in this uh, proof sites in Aronakoit last year, 25, let's say. Wanted to know where were each of those deer, 107 deer, where'd they come from? And, and I also wanted to know um, how many deer that were actually taken required um, police to come out and get the deer because it didn't die on the spot and it went on a land that was, um, you know, not approved for hunting, let's say, for whatever reason, right? How many dead deer last year were required town money to take the police force off whatever their normal duty was to go either kill the deer or help the hunter track the deer? So I, I foiled that information and I was told that said information was not available. So that brings up, you know, a transparency concern for me that brings up, I mean, that information has to exist, right? Because we know that there were seven, 107 deer taken out, but why isn't that information available to us to know what site it was taken? And again, the deer that may have required um, an officer to be involved. And I think that that information is really important because in terms of a metric in managing this program, if, if a site is unproductive, you know, they may shouldn't be in there anymore. Or if many deer are being, you know, re taken and require, you know, officer assistance, maybe that's either a problem with the hunter's skill or the site's too small. So I am just wanting to request in the revisions of the bow hunt law that we put some, some text in around, um, you know, those metrics, so monitoring the, those Your sites. point is actually well taken. And, and one as we go into the program this year, one of the preferences I've stated and to, to Captain Bean and uh, Sergeant Gordon, who's going to really be overseeing this on a day-to-day -day basis, is to revise our, our metrics of reporting. Uh, it's, uh, admittedly, um, it's been the reports have been vague in the past years. They've been, um, and my preference with th that they're not vague. I think more information is better relative to um, in, in the spirit. I can't, I can't uh, guarantee everything, every variable to which you pointed to, but I, I don't disagree with that. There needs to be a more unified, uh, codified form of reporting where you do have specific variables that you know it's more of a template that you can enter in. So your point is well taken. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Delwies. Anyone wish to? address the board on this. With that, I'll take a motion to close public hearing. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is closed. And we will return. Thank you for all, uh, for all three hearings uh, for uh, providing your input. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, and with that, I will ask Madam Clerk to go back to item for board action number nine. Okay, go item number nine, declaring certain equipment as surplus property. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kiley, brief explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, the Department of Public Works is looking to surplus several Mr. pieces. Mr. Kiley, can you speak in your microphone, please? Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, the Department of Public Works looks to, uh, uh, seeks to surplus several pieces of equipment uh, as identified on Addenda A. Uh, it would be a, uh, a Ford F-250 pickup truck, a Sterling 10-wheel dump truck, and uh, the parks, the Bureau of Parks seeks to surplus uh, the old aluminum docks from the Aronaquate Bay State Marine Park. These would be sold at the next online auction uh, and uh, um, pursuant to the board resolution board action tonight. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Resolution is adopted. Madam Clerk. 
Item number 10, authorizing the purchase of one 2018 Ford pickup truck to be used by the Bureau of Public Works. Motion, moved, and second. second. Commissioner Kiley, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The uh, resolution before the board would be to accept uh, the uh, a bid in the amount of $36,402.49 for the purchase of one uh, F-250 uh, 2018 year model of regular cab pickup with an extended bed. Um, this uh, was a, uh, a bid that was put out and the lowest responsible bidder was Webster Ford uh, Incorporated DBA Henderson Ford out of uh, Ridge Road in Webster. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the proposed resolution? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 11, accepting gifts for the Arundaquite Farmers Market. Motion. Moved. And a second. Okay. Uh, Ms. Romeo and Ms. Hustle Ray on the second. Um, this would uh, accept gifts made for our farmers market that help us to uh, execute it. We have uh, thousands of people attending on an annual basis. I'd like to thank Bateman Orth Orthodontics, Flower City Yoga, Arundaquite Pediatrics, U Care Health Plan Incorporated, Upper Cervical Chiropractic of Rochester. Uh, who made such gifts, which we are accepting tonight. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 12, accepting gifts for the Arundaquite movies under the stars. Motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Hustle Ray. Uh, similar to the previous resolution, this would uh, accept gifts for the movies under the stars program. We thank Bateman Orthodontics, uh, Arundaquite Pediatrics, and Upper Cervical Chiropractic of Rochester for these gifts, which we are about to accept. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 13, authorizing an agreement with the Housing Council at Pathstone for housing counseling services to low and moderate income residents as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2018 through July 31st, 2019. Uh, motion. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hustleway. Much to the chagrin of our clerk, these are similar. The next five resolutions are all similar with very long titles. I'm going to explain them uh, uh, in a broader context at once. These are, uh, these would, all five of these would authorize uh, me to, um, excuse me, um, authorize an agreement with a particular um, organization with which we partner with to administer our community development block grant program. Our program was, uh, um, approved by the town board after public uh, hearing, I believe in uh, April or May. Uh, as such, subsequently we are uh, enter into resolutions to authorize such agreements. The first one before the board right now would authorize uh, an agreement uh, not to exceed $26,000 with the Housing Council of Pathstone to provide a comprehensive program of services pertaining to housing and home ownership to low and moderate income residents. Uh, this includes uh, pre-foreclosure outreach and counseling to folks who are in the early stages of foreclosure uh, to provide that counseling and hopefully uh, um, give them guidance to get out of that uh, process in a favorable manner. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 14, authorizing an agreement with the Arundaquite Community Cupboard to provide healthy food choices to low-income residents as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2018 through July 31st, 2019. Motion. So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, uh, this would uh, authorize a, uh, agreement, uh, authorize an agreement not to exceed $20,000 for the Ronaquay Community Cover to provide the services that Madam Clerk explained in the title. I'm very happy to increase our support of the Ronaquay Community Cover this year and thank them for all that they do for the town. Questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 15, authorizing an agreement with the Catholic Family Center for non-medical home support services to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2018 through July 31st, 2019. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, this would authorize uh, an agreement not to exceed $26,100 with Catholic Family Center to provide such services described by Madam Clerk. Uh, these include case and care management, non-medical home support, and uh, chores for elderly residents. And as always, if residents watching are interested in any of these programs, we encourage them to contact uh, our town hall, my supervisor's office, 336-6034, to be routed to the appropriate staff member. Questions or comments? 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 16, authorizing an agreement with Lifespan of Greater Rochester for the Home Safe Home for Seniors Program of Support Services to the Elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2018 through July 31st, 2019. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. As uh, Madam Clerk described, this would authorize a, a um, Authorize an agreement not to exceed $15,500 with Lifespan for their Home Safe Home for Seniors program. Always happy to support this. Uh, this uh, makes home modifications to help seniors uh, age in place. Uh, it includes things like grab bars, shower modifications, things of that sort to retrofit homes for safe living. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Last one, Madam Clerk. Item number 17, authorizing an agreement with Medical Motor Service of Rochester and Monroe County for transportation services to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2018 through July 31st, 2019. Motion. Move. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Hustler-Ray. Uh, this would authorize an agreement not to exceed $5,000 with medical motor services to provide uh, transportation services to our elderly residents. I will note um, this year's allocation specific for this fiscal CDBG year is to be used for marketing. This program does have reserves for private pr prior years, excuse me, that will allow it to continue funding those rides. Our goals this year are to increase resident uh, awareness and utilization. So uh, we will be focusing on marketing and rebranding this, the iRide program, um, to avoid uh, ambiguity about the uh, permitted uses. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 18, authorizing amendments to the 2018 operating budget to redirect departmental New York State grant funding. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Hushare. Um, this The purpose of this uh, resolution um, in the uh, 2018 operating budget, the town had uh, $125,000 in grant revenue from New York State from a grant procured by Mr. Uh, Majority Leader Joe Morelli, represented tonight by Arlie Rosalind Campbell from his office. Hello, Arlie. Um, certain expenditures were aligned with that revenue. Uh, we have since amended uh, to a certain degree those expenditures as is necessary under our town law. We need to pass a resolution authorizing uh, the redistribution of expenditures <coughs> and the allocation of those grant funds to line up with those expenditures. So this does that and it is outlined in the um, resolution before the members. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. I hope Comptroller Seely is watching at home and isn't rolling her eyes that I didn't explain that incorrectly, <laughs> but I think I got it right. Item number 19, authorizing the hiring of a police officer in the Arundaquai Police Department. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bennett, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, we continue to recruit for police officer candidates, and um, the department has reviewed the civil service list and transfer candidates, and they've selected a candidate to um, present to the board this evening. Captain Bean. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, we're currently looking at Brandon Lantry. He is a deputy with the Wayne County Sheriff's Department. He has approximately two years of service with them. He also uh, has an associate's degree in uh, criminal justice from FLCC. Uh, in 2016, he attended the Finger Leaks Police Academy. Uh, he's a volunteer fireman and comes highly recommended, recommended by his peers, coworkers, and supervisors. Uh, he'd be a reinstatement, so he'd go through an approximate 10-week training uh, and then would be able to be on his own as a police officer in Arundaquay. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? And I applaud you and Chief for your laborious task of trying to get our census of officers back up. And I believe we have a, a number of uh, hopefully uh, recruits going into the academy in the next several months and also some new officers on patrol currently, right? Uh, we, we keep our fingers crossed. For We're that. getting there. Okay. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 20, authorizing the reimbursement of tuition. Motion. Moved. And a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Vanette, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, court Clerk Victoria Wahibi um, wishes to take accounting practices and analysis to continue her education at St. Bonaventure University, and this resolution would reimburse the tuition at an uh, 80% rate. Thank you, Mr. Vanette. And uh, could you describe, uh, there's, a, there's a cap for uh, uh, annual and lifetime for the employee, correct? 
Yes, there's a $3,200 cap and an $8,000 um, lifetime maximum. My understanding is that 3200 is probably the, the most of any municipality in the area, right? Um, at least as far as any towns in Monroe County, yes. Okay, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 21, authorizing the lease of two copiers to replace copiers used by the Comptroller's Office and the Arundelpoi Police Department. Uh, motion. Move. And a second. Second. Uh, this would uh, provide for a lease of two uh, copiers, one in the Police Department, one in the Comptroller's Office through United Business Services for 39 months, and the total monthly amount of $405. Um, any questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Stone, downstairs, for putting this together. I did not ask him to run up to explain it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 22, authorizing attendance to the International Association of Chiefs of Police 2018 Training Conference. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Captain, next brief explanation, please. Uh, this is a, uh, a conference that covers relevant issues uh, in the police and, and administration level, such as federal laws, state laws, and local laws, and how uh, legal issues will affect the administration. Uh, the chief or uh, one of the administration will usually try to attend this conference. And thank you, Captain. I'll note this was budgeted in the uh, 2018 Police Department budget and is funded as such, so no budget re revisions are necessary. Any questions or comments for Captain? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 23, authorizing attendance to the Colonel Henry F. Williams International Homicide Seminar. Motion. Oops. And a second. Second. Thank you, Captain. Brief explanation, please. Uh, this is the annual homicide seminar put on in Albany, New York. It's uh, attended by many people throughout the state, country, and actually other countries have sent representatives. It covers many topics pertaining to today, today's investigative techniques, legal issues, and strategies for homicides. Um, we're looking to send one of our investigators to this. Thank you, Captain. Any questions or comments? Again, I will note this was budgeted in the 2018 departmental budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 24, <coughs> authorizing the use of email to distribute local laws. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. In our uh, quest to make government more efficient and also reduce our sometimes overabundance of paperwork, uh, uh, Section 20 of Municipal Home Rule Law actually authorizes um, governments, local governments, uh, to provide uh, draft uh, final versions of local laws similar to the ones that were provided for the hearings tonight uh, to town board members via electronic means uh, through email, PDF. Um, it provides that the local government must adopt a resolution allowing it, to, authorizing it to do so. It must be unanimously passed. So I put this forth uh, to allow us to be more efficient. I think we could save, we pass a lot of laws a, a year. This could probably save some taxpayer dollars and also reduce the amount we're putting in the recycling bin. So I hope uh, board members will give it consideration and encourage its adoption. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is unanimously adopted. Item number 25 calling for a public hearing on a proposed local law to amend Article 2 and Article 7 of Chapter 222 of the Town Code relating to right turns on red signals. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Commissioner Kiley, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, this resolution calls for a public hearing, which would be held next month uh, at the regularly scheduled town board meeting to discuss changes to the local law section. Uh, chapter 222 of the Aranaquai Town Code. Uh, that section of the Town Code, just to briefly introduce this uh, legislation, uh, is rather uh, burdensome and confusing. It labels both uh, a turn, uh, as you approach a traffic control device, a, a, a traffic light, which turns on red would be, you, you could make a, a right on red, and which traffic control devices you cannot make a right on red, both of which those sections of the Town Code are blank. So this uh, legislation would uh, uh, adopt a, a, a more uh, conducive and simpler um, a mechanism by which we could uh, eliminate uh, a, 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 a traffic control device from being able to turn right on red. And this came about due to a situation at 
Thorncliffe uh, at Cooper, where um, that uh, traffic control device, that traffic signal, if you make a right on red, you'd be interfering with children walking across that drive lane into the high school. And so uh, working with our uh, partners in government and county DOT, uh, we are looking to uh, have that traffic control device, that traffic stop, uh, have a no right on red at that location. And so this proposed legislation would allow that action to be done by the chief of police or the commissioner of the, or the superintendent of highways um, more as a stop sign uh, as, a, as opposed to a, a local law to amend uh, the town code. So, in effect, it mirrors how we approach um, stop signs. Then the process that is that is correct. So would, it would would mirror how we approach uh, approving sidewalk uh, stop signs. Yes. Yeah, so when we approach, uh, when we uh, look to uh, site a location with a stop sign, typically that's done either by the chief of police, as I said, or the superintendent of highways, and that location. Uh, we come to t before the town board to establish, uh, you know, that we'd like to establish a traffic control device, a stop sign at a particular intersection, and this legislation would allow that uh, no turn on red to be the same type of action. Rather than changing the town code uh, via public hearing, it would be a uh, board action item for the town board. Very good. Any questions or comments? Again, this would set the public hearing. I believe this is the second one we're setting for next month uh, to take place August 21st at probably 7.36, Madam Clerk, assuming the first one only lasts a minute, but it'll be the second public hearing we have. Thanks, Bob. Any questions for the commissioner? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Madam Clerk. Item number 26, amending resolution 2018-83. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Uh, Ms. Smith, explanation, please. Yes, this is to amend a resolution that the town board adopted um, a few months ago authorizing Harder Seacrest and Emory to represent the town against an Article 78 petition, uh, which was referenced during the public hearing um, challenging the bow hunt program. We are into a procedural. Um, issue right now that the Deer Management Program Board, which was created by the Town Board pursuant to Chapter 3 of the Town Code, um, has been ordered by the court to be named in the lawsuit. And the Deer Management Program Board is an arm of the town. We believe the prior resolution would authorize Harder Sea Crest to represent the Deer Management Program Board. Um, in addition to its representation of the town, but since this is a very technical and procedural issue that we're dealing with, we wanted to just button up um, any potential challenge of whether or not uh, our firm would also represent the Deer Management Program Board. Um, again, it's it's somewhat our read that under the resolution 2018-83 um, authorizing Harder Seacrest to defend the town, that included uh, the Deer Management Program Board, but again, just as an abundance of caution, we wanted to I offer this resolution um, to make it clear that any paper submitted on behalf of the Deer Management Program Board by Harder Seacrest uh, is authorized by the Town Board. Thank you. Questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. <clears throat> Item number 27, approving the special event license for St. Joseph Fats Ukrainian Catholic Church Annual Ukrainian Festival. Motion. Moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. Happy to approve this. The annual uh, festival put on by St. Joseph Fats from Thursday, August 16th to Sunday, August 19th. Always a good time. Questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 28. Approving the special event license for the American Red Cross to hold a blood drive at the Arundkoi Town Hall. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, this uh, blood drive will take place on August 22nd, 2018 from 9.30 to 4.30. If you're interested uh, in joining myself and Councilman Perticone <laughs> in uh, providing blood, we always appreciate that. We've had great participation, so if you are interested, please call my office at Town Hall, 336-6034. Questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 29, approving the special event license for Rochester Regional Health Employee Recognition Event. Motion. Moved. And a second. 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 
Thanks. In conjunction with the opening of the new Rochester Regional Health Reedman Community Health Center, uh, Rochester Regional Health is going to hold an employee recognition event actually tomorrow, July 18th, from 4.30 to 7.30. Um, so Ms. Kelly will be notifying them immediately after this uh, meeting that they are authorized to do so. <laughs> Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Madam Clerk, I now ask you to go back to um, public hearing 1, resolution 1A. A. Thank you. Pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act with respect to the amendment of Article 6 of Chapter 164 of the Code of Arundaquite relating to town property. Motion. Moved. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Ivers, explanation? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the board has reviewed at uh, the workshop and has in their packet tonight the uh, Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of the short form EAF. Um, which outlines the potential um, impacts associated with the, with the um, proposed action, which is the adoption of the local law. Um, in reviewing the um, potential impacts, it's determined that the changes to the local law will have no um, physical implications in the town except for signage related to enforcement. Uh, additionally, the proposed changes are intended to and actually enhance health and safety of residents, uh, visitors, and users of town facilities. So for that reason, we're recommending a negative declaration. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from Ms. Ivers? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Madam Clerk. Item 7, <clears throat> Public Hearing 1B. Authorizing the adoption of a local law to amend Article 6 of Chapter 164 of the Code of the Town of Arundaquai relating to town property. Motion. Moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. This would uh, um, adopt into law the proposed changes to Article 6 of Chapter 164 as it relates to management of town properties. I just want to thank staff on this, probably a majority of staff who worked on this. Um, I think attention has been drawn to one particular provision, but I think this is important, especially as we're looking to invest in our facilities. Uh, we've expanded the number of our recreational facilities almost exponentially the past few years. That includes four new soccer fields, three new athletic fields, and we look to do more of it. Um, uh, we, we, as we do that, we want to make sure that residents are coming to those facilities and enjoying them in a healthy environment and uh, an environment that's safe and uh, regulated. Um, so for that reason, I think that these uh, uh, changes to town code are necessary. I think they will have good impact and, and allow for continued uh, enjoyed use and uh, safe and healthy use of our uh, town facilities. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Madam Clerk. Oh, actually, no. I will now Good. take a motion to. Excuse me. This concludes our body of work for. Keep going. Don't regular, no. <laughs> this concludes our body of work for tonight's regular town board meeting. Uh, our next town board meeting will take place August 21st, 2018, 7 o'clock, here at the Broderick Meeting Room at Town Hall. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Good night. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Arundacoit Town Board on ICAT, Government Access. presentation of the Arundacoit Town Board on ICAT, Government Access.